Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Stank Weasel here with another regular dose of irregular content. If you're new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe and join the community. Uh, the Discord will be up soon, but much like other promises that have been made, here it is, finally the video on how to deconstruct and decompile and extract all the assets from Unity games. And we're going to be focusing primarily on Phasmophobia this time, but this does apply to other games that are made in Unity too, such as Among Us and things like that. So. It's not a very difficult process, but it is kind of lengthy due to the amount of waiting required as things are kind of being processed. So I'll go ahead and skip through those pieces to keep it as concise as possible. But let's go ahead and get started. I'll have links for everything that I describe and discuss in the description below. So you can follow along as you need to and feel free to pause, come back, share, whatever you need to do. All right, let's get started. All right, first things first, we actually wanna go over to unity.com, link in description below. And we're going to download the community slash free version of the editor and game engine. So you can click here to get started. You can click on the little picture and what you'll want to do is create a unity ID. This will take you through a little process to sign up to basically validate who you are. And then it will grant you access to the free version of the unity hub software and the unity engine. You'll want to go ahead and download and install that. And you'll know it's complete when you have the icon on your desktop or your start menu respectively. Once installed, you'll be presented with the Unity Hub projects window, and there should be nothing in there unless there may be like a demo project or something like that, but I've cleaned mine out for the sake of this tutorial. So once you see this screen, you're good to go. All right, next we're gonna go over to SourceForge. Again, the link is in the description below, and we're gonna download a little tool called Utiny Ripper. And this is a Unity asset extractor. This is a pretty effective and easy version of some of the more comprehensive decompilation methods that you can use but for the sake of what we're trying to accomplish here this will do just fine you'll notice that there are 32-bit and 64-bit builds respectively download whatever suits your computer it's likely going to be the 64-bit one once your downloads complete you'll notice there's just a handful of files and a little executable i extracted mine to my desktop for the sake of this tutorial just to keep things simple but feel free to store this wherever you would like for the sake of speed and ease and sanity at this point pardon the phasmophobia pun the easiest method in order to make the next step move along is going to be opening steam locating your game of choice in this case phasmophobia i'll right click on it select properties i will select the local files option and then click browse we'll need to know where this location is primarily because we need to know where the game data is actually being stored because this is what we're going to be referencing here momentarily when it comes to the actual you tiny ripper utility so in my case this is the path to my actual game folder so it's in that steam apps common and then phasmophobia so if i go up one directory so i'll just knock this off the end boop this is the directory that i'm trying to target right here once you've located your phasmophobia game files directory you can close steam you don't really need it anymore at this point All right, now that we've located our game directory within the Steam Apps parent folder, I'm gonna open the Utiny Ripper directory that we created after we downloaded the application. Now I'm gonna run the Utiny Ripper application itself. Notice how it's gonna ask us to drag and drop folders here. What it's looking for is this parent folder, so this actual Phasmophobia directory. And as I drag this from its location on top of here, we'll see that the actual application is now reading through the asset files and going to give us a list of things that it found. If you make it this far, your game is actually being extracted correctly. So it's read through the metadata for the actual game assets. It's read through the files and it now has an idea of what information is going to be able to be exported. All right, once you see the export button and files have been loaded message, everything that's been in the, the game directory that you're extracting is now ready to go. So once you click the export button, it's going to ask you where you'd like to store these files. So it's actually gonna create and preface that Unity project that we'll be going into. So I'm just gonna store mine on the desktop and I try and name things according to when I actually exported them. So that if I have multiple builds or multiple versions of a game that I'm wanting to look at and compare, I can kind of keep track of that, but feel free to name it whatever you want. In this case, I would name mine, you know, 02042021, something like that. And then click okay. This process does take a few minutes, so go ahead and just be patient with it. It will alert you when it's done, and then we can move on. All right, once you get to the export is finished screen, then we are good to go and move forward. You can hit open folder if you want to, doesn't really matter. Reset, we'll just reset the tool if you're gonna export something else. But as far as we're concerned, adios. All right, now that our game is extracted, 
we have a directory with a subdirectory and then all of the different folder structure and hierarchy that unity requires in order to actually operate an interface with the files that are now contained within so what we'll do here is open up unity hub and once we have unity hub open what we're going to do is click add and this allows us to add a project so as we see here's an older version of the game but i stored this one on my desktop so this time i'm going to go ahead and pick here and i'm going to open up the folder we created and then select phasmophobia because it's got that kind of child nested folder structure already ready to go once i hit select folder it's going to prompt me saying hey this was built on an older version of unity we know that we know that it's in the trello and it's supposed to get updated but for now what we're going to do is select the version of unity that's installed locally for you and in this case it's 2019.4 for me and it's going to let me just target the current platform not doing anything special and what i'll do now is just double click on this to open it it's going to say you do you confirm that you're upgrading this to say yes and again this is another kind of sit and wait moment so it'll take another few minutes i think it took me about nine minutes to extract the game and then the initial run and open of unity takes about about the same amount of time so we'll be back as soon as this is done all right well that took a little bit longer than expected once you are done loading the project into unity you'll be gre greeted with this empty scene which is unity's version of like a level uh unity is kind of a what you see what you get um editor so like you can make changes along the way you can kind of see how things are assembling you don't really have to bounce between too many screens to get things moving around while this is not a unity tutorial some quick navigation is that you know wasd will fly you around but you need to be holding the right click down on your mouse in order to move around and so in doing so you can actually you know fly around the map and things like that so that's how you can navigate the different scenes or levels per se um, in a different project so now that we've loaded up the phasmophobia extracted files notice there's a couple of different directories here so the first one is audio clip this audio clip is exactly what you think it is and if you right click on it you can go to show and explore upon doing so what you'll see is where the actual folder is located but when you open this folder up you'll see that all of the different sound files for the game are in here so for people who are wanting to um, go through and find some of the ghost sounds use those for soundboards or their own videos and things they're in here um, the clicker idol is that uh, sound that everybody always talks about um, there's the audio from the trailer in here where it's the guy saying I checked the water da 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 but yeah that's all in here um, so you can use those freely conversely there's a folder in here called scene and when you open that up there's another folder called scenes and you'll notice these are the actual level files these do take a little while to load so I'll go ahead and just fire up a little one real quick and then be right back with you once Tangle was done loading all right so now that Tanglewood is finished loading, or it's still kind of streaming itself in as the textures are loading, uh, you can again hold that right click down and you can fly around the map and look at things. And what you'll notice is that some of the textures will render as pink. And what this means is that there's usually a missing shader or a script that is in the actual project file that Kinetic Games owns. But you can actually change these shaders by selecting things by left clicking on them. So once we select it, we'll look down in the bottom right of this actual door. And we'll see that the material shader is missing so you can change the render options here um i've been using different things like standard or standard specular you can also use sprites and just use default and this will actually give you an idea of what it looks like currently and then if we say okay dang that doesn't look good at all you can come in and just kind of swap out what you have so we can say you know mask and now it's just going to make the door invisible um conversely whenever we're navigating through the map you can click on the floor and say okay this carpet material it has a shader applied to it so if we just go to standard it just makes it normal so that it kind of renders correctly you can do the same thing for the walls and so each of the maps will have these little inconsistencies because remember we took the game apart we're not using the original source files we created our own source from what has been provided with the actual shipped game so select standard there and you can go through and knock out all the pink stuff and then the maps will look normal um conversely again you can hit play and it will render the map in and then you can also do things like attach scripts to cameras and that's what I did for my videos when I was flying around and showing the different um, elements of things to find in the maps and stuff like that as I went to the actual main camera and I wrote a script that allowed me to fly the camera around so whenever you hit play it responded to WASD and then used the mouse look in order to move things around but there's tons of flexibility and tons of different little copy paste scripts or you can author your own 
or you can just kind of use the editor and get whatever you need out of here. Another folder that I'd like to point out is the one called resources. And this folder here, I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger for everybody and zoom in on it. This is where all the models are. So when we're talking about wanting to look at the EMF reader, the different ghosts themselves, again, you'll see there's some pink on these until the shaders are updated. So you'll have to make a couple of changes there. Same goes for the candle or the little uh, spaces for the, um, the little flame. That's the word I couldn't think of. But again, you can double click on these and it opens them in the main window. So if you wanted to go in and look at a specific model, you could. But remember, all you're doing is just viewing the model at this point. You're not actually putting it in a level. It's not gonna do anything, but you can still fly your camera around and take a look if you wanted to get some reference photos or make a thumbnail for YouTube or something like that. You can do whatever you want to in here. So that's the resources folder. And then the scenes folder again is the one where you'll find all the levels. All right, now that we've got everything into Unity, I know someone's gonna ask the question, where's the source code? Well, it's actually in your actual scheme apps, common phasmophobia directory. It's the gameassembly.dll, and then you've got the phasmophobia data. There's gonna be a metadata folder and file that are in there that contains the B-byte obfuscation kind of mapping and things like that. But if you're familiar with dnspy, um, .peak, things like that, this is where you'll go look for that information. But again, this is not intended to be a video that's gonna be, you know, where's the code? Um, it's in your folder already. So there's there's tools and tutorials on how to do that stuff. <laughs> All right, well, there it is. That's how to take apart a Unity game, specifically Phasmophobia in this case. So hopefully that answers a lot of the questions that people were having about where to find the different files, how to take a look at the models themselves. And this should be a good jumping off pl place for you to kind of explore. Um, Unity is pretty easy to use. There's tons of tutorials on it, tons of videos and things and training material provided with the engine itself. But if you just want to kind of go and poke around and stuff, you don't really need to know much other than, again, that uh, resources folder where all the models are, and then the scenes folders where all the levels are. And then beyond that, it's just kind of poke around, see what you find. Hopefully this helps everybody out with anything that they're wanting to dig into, whether it's for Phasmophobia or other games. And, you know, drop a like, let me know what you learned, if you learned anything at all. And uh, feel free to subscribe. I appreciate all the early support and we're doing our best to uh, kind of keep the content coming. So thanks everyone. Have a great day. Have a great weekend and uh, thank out.